you see the title of this video. You see what direction we're going in with it. I'm posing a question because I don't really have like a super plan for this video. I don't have any notes outlined. I just want to have a discussion, a talk, because I feel like looking back at the first half of 2022, it's been kind of boring for video games. It hasn't been this banner year like so many of us thought it was going to be. When you look at the three big companies, this was supposed to be a return to form for them. You know, obviously COVID delayed a lot of things and impacted a lot of things. I get that. I understand that. But 2022 was supposed to be the year when we saw the fruits of our labor. All of the things that we were waiting for were going to come to fruition when it came to video games. And once again, looking at the three big companies, I don't really think that's been the case. I think it's been kind of boring. People in general just seem to be losing interest in video game news and video game information because there's just not been a whole lot to talk about. And so I basically want to talk about what the first half of 2022 brought us and then just kind of look at all the three main companies and see who's done the best thus far and who has them positioned to be great for the rest of the year and you know really gain some momentum so if this is your first time on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button like comment and share hit the bell notification as well and let's see if we can answer this question obviously i want to hear your feedback in the comments section down below be sure to be respectful to your other viewers because there's no real right or wrong answer here it's just simply a discussion let's talk about sony first in 2022 for the first half of the year and honestly if I had to pick a company out of the three, I would say that Sony has definitely done the best job with releasing games and still continuing hype for the rest of 2022. Sony, of course, has given us two larger titles that we got earlier this year with For Horizon Forbidden West and, of course, Gran Turismo 7. Now, Horizon was really good. I didn't love it because they just they just talked way too damn much. Like I played it for like 10 or 15 hours. I was enjoying it like I really was, but I just felt like the story was too overbearing and there was like too much stuff to remember. You'd come across these characters and it'd just be like, look, let me explore, man. Let me explore. Maybe that's just a personal thing on me. Maybe I just have a small attention span or whatever. But I do think that was one of the better games thus far for the year because there was a lot to it. There was a lot of meat on the bones. There was a lot of replay value with that game and just a lot of exploration gran turismo 7 should have been just like that if not even better in terms of things like having meat on the bones and having that replay value but unfortunately they they really screwed this game up i feel and it does sort of feel like a bit of a rush job when you think about it because you know the amount of tracks the amount of cars are paltry compared to previous entries in the franchise you know you look at like gran turismo 4 and gran turismo 5 they have over twice the amount of courses twice the amount of cars that you could choose from in this game and it's just been a very slow trickle feed of stuff little updates here and there you still can't sell cars in the game which whoever thought that was a good decision you should be fired you should you should be fired like that that's that that's all i have to say about it you should be removed from the gran turismo team because you've screwed this game up and you've just yeah you, know, you haven't given us that replay value i played gran turismo 2 on my bleem cast yes the dreamcast version of gran turismo 2 so long gran turismo 4 gran turismo 5 the same thing and gran turismo 7 definitely doesn't have that loop that keeps sucking me back in and that's unfortunate because this should have been a home run this should have been an easy thing but those were really sony's two big titles this year and then of course you have god of war ragnarok coming out later on this year which i think is the game that a lot of people are really looking forward to from sony but beyond those three games you know it's been kind of quiet you know we've gotten some little teasers here and there about upcoming games you know they're sort of teasing playstation vr 2 as well i think there's a lot of good things happening at sony they did indeed release their new premium subscription service which i think actually runs a lot better than i thought it was going to run you know as long as they keep updating that i think it'll be really cool they definitely need to focus on the ps1 and ps2 side of things a bit more than just trying to be a direct competitor to game pass by having newer games on there but i think sony has done a decent job you know all things considered i think they've done a decent job but still like even beyond that it's like okay well we know about god of war what else is there stray is that what everyone's hyped up about stray a game about a cat because Twitter, Twitter leads me to believe that Stray is going to sell like 100 million copies. And we all know it's not going to because it's just sort of like a meme at this point. Like, oh, you get to play as a cat. And it's like, 
what is people's obsession with cats? Like, dogs are so much cooler than cats. Cats have fucking attitudes, okay? Cats are little prissy things that will scratch you and turn on you. A dog is loyal. A cat is not loyal. A dog is loyal. So dogs over cats all day. But I do think Sony did an okay job this year. Not super spectacular, though. Then we're going to talk about Xbox. And Xbox has the same problem that they have had for a very long time. I'm not trying to bash Xbox. This is not an Xbox bashing video. If you watched my video talking about their summer showcase presentation and what they've done in the first half of this year, I was willing to give them another year, another year extension. And what do I mean by that? There's nothing coming out in 2022. Starfield was supposed to be 2022. No, now that's coming out in 2023. All their big titles have been delayed once again until 2023. We haven't gotten updates on games like Fable, Avowed, Perfect Dark, all these other pro Everwild, all these other projects that Microsoft has announced over the past couple years. We, we still don't really know anything about them. And most importantly, we're not going to be able to play them anytime soon. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating because you would hope that you would start to see the fruits of this labor that we've gotten from Microsoft, obviously purchasing all these companies up. And I do understand that, yes, it, it takes time. I'm not an idiot. People think I'm like an idiot or something. And they're like, oh, you do you realize that it takes time to make the games? It's like, yeah, no shit. But like, hurry up, you know, put, put a little pep in your step. And then you have the whole thing crunch versus you know actual meeting a deadline of a game and it's like that's a whole nother debate for another day because so many people make that out to be a black and white issue between crunch and you know actually just making the game at your own pace but it's like don't you have to have a deadline at some point in time like obviously you don't want to work like 100 hours a week and sleep under your desk and shit like that but you do have to keep into a accountability accountability like that's, that's such a lost concept in 2022 Nobody wants to be accountable for their actions. And that's, a, sorry, I'm getting off track here. But I do think Microsoft has positioned themselves in a good place for 2023. But as far as 2022 is concerned, it was a dry year. It's going to be a dry year. You're pretty much relying on games coming to Game Pass to be that exciting sort of thing because you don't have any first party titles, exclusive titles coming out on your system or on your platforms. 2023, like I said, I'm not bashing Microsoft here. It's simply a fact. It's simply a fact. 2023, they could be the most dominant company ever, sell 100 million systems in a month. Who knows? But right now, you have to admit it. Even if you're an Xbox fanboy to the core, because holy shit, Xbox fanboys and PlayStation fanboys and Nintendo fanboys, you're all insane. You are all insane. You need to take a step back, stop simping for a piece of plastic that doesn't love you and for a company that doesn't pay you. I... You know, it was disappointing to see Microsoft's 2022. There is no salvation in the second half, so unless you're excited about Scorn, Scorn, the Tool music video. I know the pieces fit, cause I watch them fall away. Like if Maynard isn't in that game, that's gonna be ridiculous. But you know, Xbox, an inconclusive year, another wash of a year, and even the second half of the year is gonna be like that. And then you have Nintendo, which should have been this is where things get weird to me. They, they should have been the dominant company this year. They should have had no problems. You're not introducing new hardware. You're not asking developers to do things outside of what they're accustomed to doing. This should have been a home run banner year for you. But when you look at, you know, the first half of the year software, like it's been okay, I guess. You know, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, really solid game. You know, a really good game, a nice revitalization for Kirby as a franchise, but besides the main storyline which you could beat in anywhere from 8 to 12 hours there wasn't anything else there wasn't any sort of reason to go back and play this game there wasn't really a reason to want to you know go back and replay stuff or discover new stuff it was kind of a one and done game nothing wrong with that at all but i don't think it was like great enough to want you to replay the game over and over again a solid entry a good complimentary game but nothing too groundbreaking nintendo switch sports it was okay you know it, it served its job you know it is fun to play these games online so i think that's a decent enough title and then mario strikers battle league should have been it should have been the game that that stood the test of time it should have been the game that stood out and mario strikers battle league i'm sorry the gameplay is solid but the game itself is not a good game for a game based on multiplayer 
to only allow two people onto one team when it's a team of four people plus a goalie is ridiculous especially when the ai is as bad as it is how many hypercharged shots are they gonna let go by because they're just standing there like idiots there's no inconsistency and it's just like the actual core of the game is fun the idea is fun it's just that there's there's not enough stuff to make you 10 characters like five courses that all look the same and there's no sort of you know differences between them like mutant league football or mutant football league what was the newer one that came out i don't know i think it's mutant football league that game had way more you know it was that same sort of vibe obviously a little bit more adult but that had way more content in terms of like fun stuff in terms of teams in terms of you know multiplayer stuff in terms of having you know hazards on the course and stuff like that and there's nothing like that in mario strikers battle league it definitely feels like an a la carte experience which of course is a problem that nintendo has been facing with a lot of their first party titles so let's shift to the second half of the year and mystery miss it's mystery it's mystery theater 3000 and I really watched that show. But, you know, it's like, well, what the hell are you doing? You know, we have Xenoblade coming out this month, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which, according to Twitter, you know, that's going to sell 500 million copies that will overtake every other game ever. That's going to be the best selling video game, period. Like, it's going to sell so many copies. It'll sell more copies than, like, Grand Theft Auto as a franchise and Tetris as a franchise combined because everyone evidently just love xenoblade and then you have um splatoon 3 and splatoon 3 once again that should be a home run but i'm not so sure you know i'm not so sure about that when you look at some of their online offerings with games like uh you know mario strikers battle league mario golf and all this stuff these games were uh, uh, essentially a la carte experiences so is splatoon 3 going to be that big home run I mean, maybe when you look at beyond that, you know, Breath of the Wild 2 was supposed to come out. That, that's not happening, evidently. You are getting Mario and Rabbids 2, which I think looks phenomenal. The new Pokemon games, which we still have a lot to learn about. But we sort of have that uncertainty with Nintendo's second half of the year because they decided not to do a Nintendo Direct. Kind of leaving it up to mystery. Yeah, you got your little third party presentation. You learned about some stuff, which I thought the third party presentation was decent enough. You know, I wish there would have been like one or two more Western games in there. Like, I understand people love their Weeaboo stuff and their JRPGs and stuff like that. I am a fan of them too. I am a fan of them too, but I also like variety. There's nothing wrong with wanting a Western game or a Western, you know, style game along with your Japanese style games. Just my personal opinion with that. So, I think Nintendo has a solid second half of 2022, as long as the execution is good. But you do have to wonder about that execution. You do have to wonder, well, what else is there really going to be? You know, is Bayonetta 3 coming out this year? Breath of the Wild 2 was supposed to come out this year, which would have made the year a home run. Of course, that's been delayed until 2023. Now, there have been some other games from smaller companies that have been really good. Honestly, this is going to sound weird. The game I've played the most has been Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. That was the game that's brought me the most fun. I have played it to death on my Switch. I have played it to death on my Xbox. I actually go on the treadmill for like an hour and I just play through the game. You know, I play through the game with random people to level up the characters. Like, I feel like that game absolutely knocked it out of the park and there's a lot of appreciation for that game. And there's a lot of replay value with that game because even if you just look at that game on the surface level and be like, oh, it's not like you're really unlocking other stuff after your first playthrough of the game. Like, that's not the point. The point of the fact is that the game is fun you know the game is awesome the game looks good the game plays good there there's just a, a nostalgic feeling for a lot of people that play that game and you know maybe it boils down to my preferences maybe my preferences are just changing with games but i don't know it just seems like like 2022 has just been a bit of a dry year you know kind of a disappointment just kind of i guess the really the better term is boring like there hasn't been any surprising stuff there hasn't been any surprising announcements all of these games that are coming out this year we've already known about you know there it's not like there's some big thing that happened at the tail end of the year and it's like oh well maybe that game's gonna come out in 2022 and then it does come out this year for all we know this is what we got we've got god of war ragnarok we've got splatoon 3 we've got xenoblade you got pokemon we've got nothing over on xbox and then like that's it and is that really making for a great year in gaming i don't know man i don't know i just this is something that i was just thinking about and I wanted to make a video about it and kind of cover the main companies, how I feel that they've done and, you know, how the outlook is for the rest of the year. But so far, man, I just feel like gaming has been boring this year. You know, there's a general lack of interest 
in video games because nothing new is happening. Nothing exciting is happening. Everything that's happening, we've pretty much known about this whole time. And it's just like waiting on the product to actually come out before we could get our hands on it. But this just hasn't been that real surprise element, I feel. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm complete. Maybe this 15 minute video was completely wrong. And if that's the case, you know, let me know in the comment section down below. And I appreciate you hanging out with me till the end. But it's just my thoughts on it, man. So be sure to give me your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. Your feedback, what you think about it. Am I right? Am I wrong? And as always, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Hit the bell notification as well. I'm trying to wrap this up in a timely manner. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.